Okay, uh, let me start with the conceptual questions. I don't know if anyone, okay, no one submitted, which is right, you know, way too early in the week. <laughs> Although if you have, I, I'm not gonna shame you. Um, so let me, um, let me go to Perplexity AI and uh, just to ask it these questions. And I think I'm, I already have the app. Um, um, so, um, yeah, so let me just uh, start. Uh, I think this is the part of the semester where sometimes uh, um, generative AI doesn't get it right because it's a little bit harder set of topics. But let's see. Um, uh, maybe perplexity with the GPT-4 would do better than uh, how ChatGPT was doing last uh, semester. So, okay, that's the question. Um, so you can best describe this in terms of energy, total energy, bound orbit as negative total mechanical energy. Uh, yeah, which is um, <laughs> in part B. Uh, explain why. And yeah, I guess the convention for gravitational potential energy, that's the... Um, so I guess in A, uh, what uh, maybe better description is a feature of the orbit. Bound orbit is a uh, great bound, such as planet in a boundary follows, yeah, close the path. Uh, that kind of feature is a way to describe without uh, just repeating what's in part B. Uh, that's good. Uh, can be circular or elliptical, right? Th this is if uh, it's a two body motion, like a central heavier body, or I guess it doesn't actually have to be heavier, a central body and another body orbiting it, then it has to be circular or elliptical. Uh, proving that was uh, one of um, the work that Newton was uh, celebrated for. Um, it's, if it's more than that, then it gets uh, complicated. Uh, tolerance, negative, right. Unbound orbit, like a, a hyperbolic orbit is, I think, an example of an unbound orbit. We had a, a extrasolar object that was on that path um, uh, like a couple of years ago. It, uh, the object was in Oma something. It, it's just some um, <laughs> non-English name that I can't remember. I think it starts with the O. It uh, was a, like an elongated object, and it was on such a path that astronomers could have figured out that it would have a close encounter with the sun once, and then it'll go away into um, the, the deep space. It won't encounter us again in the future. Um, so, unbound orbit, yeah, it has enough energy to escape the gravitational pull, right? Open path, yeah, hyperbolic or parabolic. I think a parabolic is where it has exactly zero total energy. Um, yeah, zero or positive. Uh, key distinction is the total energy, yeah. Uh, convention for, yeah, zero at infinite distance. This is what I like to call universal reference point. Universal in that anybody can refer to it. Because it's not, uh, unlike a reference that's nearby, it, when it's uh, infinitely far away, it's infinitely far away for everyone. Um, negative is a good, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we'll, when you st study electrostatics in physics 4b, you will see the same uh, reference point being used, but with the electric charges, uh, they, the force being possible to be repellent as well as attractive will mean different possibilities. Um, yeah, can I, yeah, yeah, all, all good, nice and detailed, yeah, good. Um, now, if uh, something like that is what you put in your answer verbatim, then, you know, it's not okay. Uh, really, no joking, it's not okay. But um, uh, if this is helping you learn, giving you some resources to read through outside of your textbook, then great. As what, whatever resource is helping you learn physics, I have no objection to. Okay, geosynchronous. By the way, uh, I use geosynchronous in a bit of um, um, not 100% correct way. So there's a distinction between geosynchronous and uh, geostationary. And um, I think uh, here I use geosynchronous as if it's the same thing as a geostationary and not quite. Um, and uh, I remember from last year's uh, ChatGPT, um, ChatGPT was using geosynchronous the same way I was, but I know it's a mistaken way. So let's see how perplexed they with the GPT for answers. 
geosynchronous orbit, uh, Earth centered orbit, yeah, orbital period that's 24 hours or, you know, that <laughs> one scenario day. Um, uh, in one day with reference to the stars, uh, rather than with respect to the sun. Um, with respect to the sun, there's like an either extra or one less rotation over a whole year. So, synchronization means that observer geosynchronous orbit returns to the yeah, that, that is the actual correct use of the word the geosynchronous. Um, may remain still if it's a geostationary or a trace out of path. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, geostationary, um, which is a circular geosynchronous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this uh, question, any uh, describe if there are any restrictions. So with the geosynchronous, there isn't any restriction. With the geostationary, there is a restriction. You have to, it has to be along an equatorial plane. You know, just, yeah, just answer. Uh, the, yeah, so that's a good answer. Um, let's see, align for real time. Yeah, minimum of three. Because if you have two, like on opposite sides, covers each half of the uh, uh, the sphere, then uh, those two can communicate with each other, and that's a that that won't work. <laughs> so you need a three to kind of triangular thing, so that satellites can communicate with each other, and between the three of them, it covers all the uh, places on Earth. Um, yeah, yeah. So here, um, I think it, I I confused the uh, GPT with my wrong use of the words geo. Uh, wait, wait, sorry, no. I, is that a geostationary? Okay, so that's good. That's correct. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a um, it's a good answer, and uh, it wasn't confused by my idiosyncratic use of geosynchronous to be synonymous to geostationary. Uh, that, that, that is a good answer. Um, yeah. And the Starlink satellite, they are, um, they don't use a geosynchronous uh, orbit. They use low Earth orbit, and that has a certain advantages, um, as in smaller latency. Um, but uh, in order for that to work, they need a constellation of satellites. Because in low Earth orbit, uh, each given satellite doesn't cover a lot of ground, so you need to have a lot of them to provide enough coverage. Um, and um, yeah, and uh, I hear the the internet quality of uh, Starlink satellite Starlink network is better than uh, like what the satellite internet used to be in the old days, uh, mostly using geo uh, geo geosynchronous uh, satellites. I don't think they have to be geostationary. Okay, orbit of a satellite, uh, M, about a large mass, capital M, please answer the following questions. And uh, this is the description of the diagram. Good. At which point? Which? And then describe force F, uh, let me say back F. Um, I wonder, I think if I use, uh, um, let me use LaTeX notation so that it has better sense. Back A. Um, I could use curly brackets, but with a single letter, I don't have to. Back B. Okay. Um, yeah, let's see how it answers. Uh, every G point. Oh, yeah. So greatest at the uh, closest point here, slowest here. Um, conservation law, speed of the satellite. You could give two different ones, either conservation of energy or conservation of angular momentum. Angular momentum is uh, easier to argue with. Um, so let's see. So greatest at the point close to mass, good. Known as perigee, if uh, this mass is Earth. G is uh, from, you know, Greek gay, uh, Gaia. Um, <laughs> if this is the sun, it'll be perihelion. Um, so, yeah. Farthest point, uh, apogee or ap aphelion, uh, if it's uh, like planet and the sun. Uh, the speed of the satellite at this point is my control law. So total energy, yeah, one, and angular momentum, two. And uh, some of, sometimes the textbook authors make this mistake. They give a situation like this, and they give you too many parameters, um, forgetting that, you know, expecting you to find the answer using conservation of angular momentum. 
and then forgetting that um, conservation of total energy actually constrains what the parameters can be at different points. Um, so uh, it, it's, a, it's a common trap for question, textbook question writers. Um, for the questions that are in this class, we fix them. So the numbers we give in the question are um, consist, it, it's for a possible orbit. The total energy satellite, which is so it can, remains constant, yeah, energy is conserved. When it, potential energy is the minimum, the most negative it's going to be. So kinetic energy has to be yeah, at a maximum, the most positive it's going to be. And yeah, that's good. Oh, so plays a role, yeah, close. It speeds up to conserve angular momentum. You think of in terms of the lever arm and the speed because the angular momentum is, uh, in one way to calculate it is lever arm times the speed gives you the, lever arm times the speed times mass gives you the angular momentum and mass of the object not changing. The change of the lever arm will determine how uh, fast it's moving. Um, yeah, and, and uh, for the purpose of questions you will get in this chapter, this is a better and easier way to calculate. Uh, at the point where the speed is greatest, the four all greatest and the least. Uh, no, that's not right. Um, the force and the velocity point in the same direction. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> The force and the acceleration point in the same direction. You know, gravitational force, central force, it points towards the, where the mass is. But the velocity is perpendicular. It's not in the same direction. This is because uh, it's the only significant force acting on the satellite. Force is, yeah, yeah. And actually, force and acceleration will, should always be in the same direction because Newton's second law. Uh, according to Newton's second law, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the velocity... Is tangential to the orbit tangent? It doesn't. Um, so let me try asking this question. Um, I'm not saying. So I, I don't want to give it the answer because I've seen that GPT is um, way too agreeable. When you challenge it, it just immediately agrees with you. <laughs> don't want you to do that. <laughs> I'm not saying that uh, uh, line tangent to the ellipse at the Harry G or Apple G is um, parallel to the um, to the line connecting the mass M and mass big M. Um, um, could you clarify how uh, the tangent line aligns? Let's see if it digs the hole further or it corrects itself. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, okay, so it's not getting it. Um, it, it doesn't align that way. <laughs> okay, it, uh, it is hallucinating. All right, uh, I have no idea why it's doing that. Um, are you sure the tangent line isn't perpendicular to the line segment connecting the mass M and the mass M? Then it'll probably agree with me and apologize and correct itself, probably. Oh wow, it's actually... This is still not right. Uh, it lost the context that we are talking about perigee and apogee. Um, yeah, so, all right. I, I'm gonna say it's a partially wrong one C because uh, it's a, uh, um, uh, I looked up the answer key. It says that the force and acceleration factors are in the same direction that uh, Perigee and apogee, but um, but that the uh, velocity is a perpendicular to the force and acceleration at these points. Uh, 
is the answer okay wrong <laughs> let's hope it uh why is it not submitting um answer is not wrong <laughs> okay it's correct <laughs> is he gonna apologize um unless it's perpendicular to yeah okay that is correct yeah yeah. yeah okay uh so yeah all of that the last response is correct so let me just challenge it with this uh, why did you say um uh, why did you say then um I, I just want you to apologize I'm actually surprised that it hasn't apologized already, because usually, uh, okay, so I, it feels like it will apologize. Um, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, <laughs> so again, if this uh, interactive tool is somehow helping you learn physics, then great, I have no objections. Just don't use it to cut corners because <laughs> sometimes it will make mistakes. Uh, and the kind of mistakes it makes is just weird. It's, um, yeah, yeah.